Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do yet another Skinwalker Encounters video. This one focusing on two short ones, two different stories, but both of them essentially having some really, really creepy encounters. One of them definitely stood out more than the other one. I like doing these because it definitely showcases different vantage points, personal vantage points, like first person perspective when it comes to these encounters. And then as always, I'll give my own opinion on them afterward. I'd love to hear too what your comments are with, uh, with regards to each story. So the first one comes from a user by the name of the Epic Otaku Boy. And they titled it, I think I encountered a skinwalker. And then the second one comes from a user by the name of P. May Vegas. And they titled it Possible Sighting Before Blank. And then I'll mention more about that blank part here in a minute. But let's go ahead and let's share both of the encounters here. And then again, I'll talk about my own comments afterward. So the first one is, I think I encountered a skinwalker. Here's what they state. This was about three months ago, but I still can't get it off my mind. I live right on the border of Navajo land, and it makes it that much worse. It was about 2 a.m., and I was staying at my friend's house. He had just gotten his motorcycle license, so since we couldn't sleep, like dumb kids, we decided to go out riding. We rode out to this little mudding trail in the middle of the forest where we could ride around and do whatever we wanted, and we came to a stop at the end of a trail, and that creepy feeling of being watched started to kick in. I heard light footsteps coming from my right, deeper into the forest. And at this point, my friend got off the bike and then went to take a pee, leaving me all alone. As I look out into the forest, I could swear I saw a pair of eyes looking back at me, but they didn't have the glare that came from animal eyes. My friend then shouted, sheesh, that's a big one, sounding like a complete idiot. And then as I see him walking back to the bike, I hear an exact replica of what my friend said coming back from the direction of where I saw the creepy eyes earlier. And no, I'm not joking, it sounded literally exactly the same. At this point, me and my friend both just looked at each other, and then I asked, was that you? And he responded with a resounding, hell no. And so immediately both got on the bike and rode back home as fast as we could. The entire time, I was trying to shake away all fear I had because I've heard they, f they feed off of your fears and negative energy. And I haven't been back to that forest since, and I don't think I ever will. And then that's it. That's everything that the epic Otaku Boy stated with his encounter. Short but sweet, but let's go ahead and let's talk about that here. First off, just like many of the other stories, it happens right there on Navajo land, prime territory, right? When it comes to skinwalkers, it happened in the dead of night too. And the trifecta was that it happened out there in the middle of a forest. All of those good combinations that I've mentioned in past videos. And then once again, here you have a pair of eyes that apparently were staring back at the user. And once again, it replicated the voice of the friend. Someone else might have to tell me on that. I know that skinwalkers are known to be shapeshifters, but is it common for them to be able to take on the persona of someone's voice as well? Because that's what it seems like when it comes to the pattern of several of my videos delving into that same exact thing. So obviously this dude had the heebie-jeebies as soon as he heard that. Obviously his friend was telling him that that wasn't him making that noise. And so it was very wise that they got out of there. First time too that I was reading as far as these creatures being able to feed off of someone's fears or someone's fears. Someone mentioned that to me please if that's also a common theme. And it makes sense too because something like this, something this evil something this just negative, you would definitely have it being able to do something like that. Like almost like you hear stories about um, ghosts and spirits involving demons, how they feed off that negative energy too. Makes you uh, wonder if these skinwalkers do the very same thing. I wish he could have said more about where the location was because I'm sure that forest would have had a, not a maybe a official name, but you know how forests tend to have or other pieces of land tend to have unofficial names. So it would have been great to see what it looks like, at least from outside, let's say on Google Maps or something else. Now the second one, again, comes from a user by the name of P. May Vegas. 
and they said possible sighting before blank. I have to say blank because this word here I can't really post on YouTube. Uh, think a bit of the most common disease, the item that's going out there in the world right now that's pretty much impacting you and me starts with the letter C. If I mention this word, that's where YouTube gets really, really bad about it. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it blank here. But here's essentially what happened, what they stated. So like six months or so before C, my young daughter and I live with my mother. My mom has this house and it's kind of like on the very edge of town. We live in Arizona, so it's surrounded by desert. And the closest bus stop to my mom's house is about a 45-minute walk away over there at a community college. So my mom had taken a three-month Europe trip, and so my daughter and I, we had the house all to ourselves, and we were definitely enjoying it. One Sunday afternoon, we had to go out grocery shopping, and so we set out on the bus. We got our shopping done and windows shot for a little too long afterward. So when we went to catch the bus home, I realized it was sunset. I tried everyone I possibly could to get a ride back to the house. I absolutely dread walking from that bus stop at night because after you get away from the college, there's no street lights. It's literally like pitch black outside except for the occasional cars and their headlights passing by. That's all right. He said, my daughter is absolutely petrified of the dark, and there are often homeless camps in the desert nearby. I'm always nervous one of those people in those camps might try to grab me up or something. Alas, not one person was available to drive us home, and so we hopped on the bus anyways. I tried to prepare my little one for the dark walk ahead and let her know she is always safe with me. I carry mace and a pocket knife. And by the time we pulled up to the college, it was fully dark out. And as the bus driver stopped the bus, I caught the back feet and tail of what looked like a giant, I'm talking 10 feet plus, naked dog jumping into a bush right in front of the bus. I'm a total skeptic and definitely assumed my eyes were playing tricks on me. However, right as the figure disappeared into the bush, I heard the bus driver say, what the F was that, staring in the direction it was in. This was the most terrifying walk of my life, as I held my little girl's hand, speed walking as much as she could handle, trying to show her how afraid I was. I wouldn't dare look back. As soon as I got back to the house, I turned all the lights on and then locked every door. I checked all the windows, made sure they were all still locked. I looked up and what might be as far as a skinwalker and Google seemed to agree with me and I'm wondering what y'all think. And then that's pretty much it. That's everything that this user had to state. This one was the one I was stating was the scarier of the true because I like again visualizing all these things as I'm reading them. Here you have the situation. It must have been a little while back because the fact that she couldn't get a ride back to her house in this day and age, you know, involving Uber and Lyfts, even taxis, makes me wonder if this was, uh, you know, before that time period. But either way, though, the visualization was there they were out there in a desert area in Arizona, once again, Navajo land or Skinwalker land. And she had to take a bus, which conveniently was at a community college, but inconveniently was 45 minutes away from her house. So imagine that. Imagine being in the dead of night being dropped off at the bus, and as she stated, once you're away at that community college, it is just pitch black. I mentioned this before, and I'll say it again. I've been out there in Nevada in certain areas where there are no street lamps. There are nothing in terms of lights. There's roads. There's, If you could call it that, there's definitely there. But once you're walking around, it is pitch black. It is so dark outside, so I could totally visualize what this poor woman and a young daughter had to go through. 45 minutes of walking away from the community college home after seeing this. Whatever she described it as a giant 10 foot plus naked dog jumping right into a bush right in front of the bus. You can't get more of a scarier experience than that, especially since the bus driver saw it too. It made me wonder too why the bus driver, I guess, didn't do anything about it, like maybe do something where, hey, maybe let's not drop you here. Is there anywhere I can drop you closer? I got the impression that they were the only ones on the bus, too. Otherwise, 
she would they would have said something like she would have said the bus driver said you know there were other witnesses or other people that said i'm not getting off here anything like that no um it made it seem like they were the only ones there so i'm wondering why the bus driver didn't offer any more protection of some sort especially after all this also there's a chance she could have called a cop you know in other words to try to do something in terms of maybe an escort something like that home but who knows that's all again uh, just afterthoughts but yeah imagine that being seeing this thing and then having to walk 45 minutes after that all the way home in this pitch black darkness with the occasional street lights here and there hell no when it comes to that i'm not doing that i would have found another alternative when it comes to that but she made it but she definitely had that freaky experience but that's pretty much it let me know what your comments are below if you have any other thoughts anything else i'd love to hear them as well all right everybody thanks again as always take care